so I'd like to help you today to work on lab 2 with, without using the program LinFit and instead doing things on the web. So if we're going to do things on the web, of course, the first thing we're going to want to do is to, to start up Internet Explorer. Now, for this particular person, the uh, home page has already been set to the proper page. Let me show you another way you could have gotten the same spot, and, and that's just to Google WAPP Plus. And then typically close to the top, we have that same place. So the first thing that this program asks you is what's the nature of your errors. And we have errors in, in every coordinate as a series of numbers. So we're going to enter our Y error and our X error separately for each data point. So once we've made that selection, we can click do bulk. OK. so. I, in general, recommend using Excel for your data entry. Uh, it's a more robust program than um, the spreadsheet that's part of LinFit. And here's the data that I've collected. So I've got diameter data, error in the diameter, mass data, error in the mass, the calculated volume using that formula, and the error in that. And the plan is just to highlight those numbers copy them, and then plug them in to this area of WAP. OK, so for the first part, the Y variable is going to be the mass. And notice that these things don't particularly line up with this background image. They don't particularly line up with this column. But 1, 2, 3, this, these numbers, these masses, are column 3. And they're supposed to be the y data, and column 4 is supposed to be the error in y. For the x var variable, we want to use the volume, which are these numbers here. And we've got these two columns, um, so we better ignore them since they're, they are present. Then we want to do this as a linear fit, which is what we've got. And we can submit data. These are the resulting parameters. So here is our best guess for the slope. And here is our guess for the error in that slope. This is the y-intercept and the error in the y-intercept. Um, probably shouldn't pay a whole lot of attention to these errors, because what the program says is that the reduced chi-squared is suspect. It's, it's way too small. OK, so with that, let's take a look at the plot. So do a normal linear linear plot. We can set those things later. And there is the plot. And lo and behold, you can see that the line does seem to go dead center through every one of those data points. So it's not Typically, there would be some sort of deviation. So that, that looks like it's a um, certainly a, a good fit. Probably our error estimates are not quite right. Well, that was the first fit. For the second fit, we're supposed to use for our x data the diameter, in which case we better ignore these columns. And the function we're going to want to fit to is a power law. So if I try that, again, I get too small power law. The value for b is pretty much cubed, which is what we would expect. The volume is proportional to the length cubed. And we get a particular value for the overall multiplicative component. Now, if we just plot this up in the normal fashion, quite naturally, as we go to bigger diameters, we get more mass in, in a, this uh, cubic fashion. What the book says is that if we choose logarithmic scaling, now these things aren't uniformly scaled for 820, um, but it still looks like a straight line. So that's indicative of a power law. OK, so I hope today I've showed you the basic idea for how to use this program WAP in order to fit your data for, for this lab.